there's, there's, a, there's a strong probability that it will make life much better uh, and that we'll have an age of abundance. Um, and, and there's some chance that it goes wrong um, and uh, destroys humanity. Hopefully that chance is small, but it's not zero. Tesla has actually um, a, a tremendous capability in real world AI. Yes. In fact, it is very far ahead of of anyone. Any. I know people actually on Twitter prior to our interview were saying, you know, he never gets asked about how advanced his AI is at Tesla. You always talk about the other names. Te Tesla AI is, uh, like I said, by, it's like, is it, there's not, I'm not even sure who's second, frankly. Um, why is that? Why, then what, is, what are people not understanding about what you have and why are we talking so much about ChatGPT and generative AI at OpenAI and what Microsoft's going to be able to do with it and not about Tesla? I don't know. I mean, people do talk about it online. Um, I, think, I think Tesla will have sort of a chat GPT moment. Maybe the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. And then AI, which is, you know, called the, it, it's called the singularity for a reason. Like, because you don't know what's going to happen. It's like a black hole. You go in the black hole, what happens? Don't know. We're on the we're on the singularity AI singularity event horizon, circling the black hole. Well, and does AI concern you more than those other things like geopolitical nuclear war or whatever? And where does that fall on the scale for you? I know you've you've said some cautionary things about it, but I don't know if you're like as much of a doomer as some people are about AI. I mean, the good news about Russian roulette is five of the barrels are loaded. <laughs> That's encouraging. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the bright side. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like a lot of times people that are in tech are pushing these things forward without any guardrails or consideration, you know for what could go wrong, despite all the cautionary tales. <laughs> what is like, like, that's what sci-fi is about, all about. You know? that's you why think there should be regulation and stuff like that, right? But what does that look like? How do you regulate AI, for example? Well, I, th I think you, you start off with uh, an insight committee um, that has uh, you know, people that are independent from the leading players, as well as maybe some representatives, re representatives from the leading players. And uh, that's an insight committee. The goal is simply to learn things. Um, and then consult with industry and propose rules. Um, that's basically how it's worked for food and drug or for aircraft or cars. You know? So is that when, there, when there is something that is a danger to the public, uh, there's some regulatory body to, kind of like a referee, make sure the companies don't cut corners and stuff. I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI uh, regulation. Um, so that I think regulation is, uh, f you know, I, I, it's, it's not fun to be regulated. It's, it's so, sort of a, somewhat of a, a somewhat arduous to be, to be, to be regulated. Um, I have a lot of experience with regula re regulated industries because obviously uh, automotive is hi highly regulated. You could fill this room with all the regulations that uh, are required for a production car just in the United States. And then there's a whole different set of regulations in Europe and China and the rest of the world. We should uh, take this seriously and, and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI. Uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably, hopefully, grudgingly be accepted by uh, the, the major players in, in, in AI, and um, and w w I think we'll have a better chance of, of um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. Tesla is the only uh, car company selling cars that we're, where we believe the, the car is capable of achieving full autonomy with a software update. So the, the value of a fully autonomous, uh, or fully autonomous car is, um, we think, um, perhaps uh, five times more valuable than a non-autonomous car. Why? Well, uh, the utility of a car, typically a passenger car, is going to be maybe 10, 10 hours a week, maybe 12. Um, uh, if you say like somebody's going to drive uh, an hour and a half a day on average, uh, so maybe maybe an, uh, 
an hour of commute per day and then an occasional long trip. But figure it's like 10, 10 12 hours yep. a, a week is typical for um, uh, a passenger vehicle. Um, and then uh, uh, you also have a lot of costs associated with parking. You need a garage or you've got to buy a parking space or you've got to get a, you know, get a parking ticket at the, at the mall. It's, there's a lot of costs associated with cars. Um, and uh, now if you've got a car that's autonomous, um, that can go around and essentially be an, like an autonomous Uber. Um, the utility, I think, is, is going to be well, it's going to be much higher. Perhaps, uh, perha you know. And th this again, there was so, this is so speculative. I understand. Um, We're talking about robo taxis here, or at least what people have called and you have called. Yeah, robo -taxis. like an uh, autonomous Uber is, right. is, is a way to think about. It. So right. perhaps uh, the utility then would be on the order of 50 hours a week. Mm -hmm. This is just a guess. Say, say like, there's 168 hours in a week, um, and probably. As a rough guess, an autonomous car is will be able to uh, be active instead of for for ten hours a week, probably in our, in our view for about fifty. Um, right. But it's the same car, so the and it costs the same to build. Um, but so, you're, I want to understand the business model a little bit because I'm buying the car, and instead of it parking at my lot while I'm working, it goes off and picks people up and drops them off. Yes. Who's making the money from that? I assume that's the value add you're talking about. Is it a revenue share? Do you have this yeah. model sort of planned out specifically as how it would look? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been in the test of terms and conditions for, for quite a long time. Oh, it has? Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the owner of the car would make, uh, I don't know, some amount. It, it, who knows what it would be, but perhaps, uh, it, it, you know, it could be a 50-50 split or 70-30, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. but. Um, the, the the cars are, are if, if you buy a Tesla car, it can only be used in a Tesla network. It cannot be used in someone else's network. So um, that that means that uh, if the car is able to be used five times as much, it, and, and um, it, it, we're, Tesla is likely to make basically two or three times the original value or sale value of the car um, in in robo taxi revenue. Right. Right. This this is this is gigantic. Um, as I said, it'll be like selling cars for software margins, mm -hmm. because in fact it is software. Right. Um, so um, in, instead of effectively having say uh, twenty five cent um, margins, it might be seventy seventy percent or more. Um, and. Uh, I mean, the, the, the free cash flow associated with that it, it is actually truly a staggering uh, amount. Mm -hmm.